are muted. Entry and exit tones are off. Okay, good morning, millionaires. Good morning, millionaires. I hope everybody's feeling incredible this beautiful morning. If you don't know, my name is Hazik Ali. I'm a self-esteem development fanatic starting with my own. And uh, more importantly to you and your business, maybe you'll consider this more important is the fact that I'm a revenue acceleration expert. My whole goal is helping your business to make more money. Sometimes we do that with a uh, heart set, you know, where we're making sure that you're more empathetic. We're making sure that you have the skills that allow you to expand your capacity because uh, at the end of the day, people are how you're gonna achieve your dreams. It's your ability to work with others. Yeah, your motivation, your visualization, your affirmations, you can't delegate that stuff. But the power to influence others, the ability to uh, care about others so they care about you, all of that's way, way, way dependent upon other people and, and, and how they receive your actions, not just your intentions. So that's the heart set side of things, right? Giving you a different way to look at everything. We also cover mindset a lot because at the end of the day, uh, your mentality is going to determine your reality, right? A lot of times what we forget is that it's your attitude that determines your altitude. Does that make sense? Uh, a lot of times we focus on the fact that you don't see with your eyes, you see with your mind. And so what we got to do is adjust that mindset so that the things you see are the things that you're really looking for, that you're really meaning to look for, if I'm making sense to somebody out there. And then there's the skill set side of things, y'all. Because even though mindset and heart set might be 80% of it, who wants to get 80% across a lake? <laughs> who wants to get 80% across a river? Who wants to fly 80% of the way to where they're trying to get? No, we're trying to get all the way there. And to get all the way there, we still need some skills. A good attitude is not all we want in a surgeon that's working on our mama. A good attitude ain't all we want in a pilot that's flying us across the water. <laughs> a good attitude is not what we want in somebody who's paid to defuse bombs. Can you imagine? We want you to also have some skills. And so sometimes we're talking skill set. Sometimes we're talking mindset. And sometimes we're talking heart set. If you haven't joined our newsletter yet, this is a great time to do it. You know, starting Monday, we're doing it on Mondays, but today will be the last Friday newsletter. This will be the last newsletter to ever come out on a Friday. So enjoy this. Make sure you register for it. Go to millionairemindedcom That's going to keep you in the game. You see what I'm saying to you? So we're about to get this party started. Give me a replay, gang, if you're watching a replay. Right now, we're about to check in. I want to make sure everybody's here. Rep your city. Let them know where you're at. Yuli in the house. Good morning, millionaire. <laughs> okay. My man D Money is in the house. Mark Arnold. Good morning. Good morning. My man Flono checking in from the jacuzzi after that morning workout. I love it. I love it. He was working out in the water this morning. That's fly, bro. Uh, Shakela is in the house. Good morning. Good morning. Tina. What's up, Tina? Good morning. Wyona made it in. I, I, I'm glad to see that. Larika is in here. Let's get it. Let's get it, Kenya. Let's get it, Kenya. What kind of business do you have? What kind of business do you have? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I see Nashville, Tennessee is in here. Farmingdale, New York. Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, Atlanta, Georgia is in the house. My man Jamal wants y'all to know he helps black men who feel insecure financially become better providers for their families. That's a powerful mission right there. My man Ken made it in from Phoenix, Arizona. Dorsey Lynn checking in from Texas. What part of Texas, Dorsey Lynn? Brooklyn, New York is in the house. Let's go. Let's go. So while I got y'all helping me out and, and engaging a little bit, um, the, the topic for today's training, because um, sometimes we do free coaching Friday, especially when we're leading into a Kaizen Academy kind of weekend. And um, sometimes we do things that are more based around, you know, our curriculum. We're helping salespeople or helping people become better leaders or helping people become better entrepreneurs, right? Helping people make more money. But since today we're talking about three principles of wealth, can I see your best guess? What, what do you think is one of the principles of wealth or success if we're saying this is a principle for any entrepreneur? Can, can I see some of your best guesses? Y'all millionaire-minded, y'all know what it is. What, what are some of the principles that you think 
will take us all the way there, Daryl. What, what are some of the principles, Maliki, that, that you feel like will take us all the way there? You know, we, we talking about uh, principles that create wealth, principles that create success for any entrepreneur. Reason I'm asking you this is because a lot of entrepreneurs, they get in, uh, they get in the business to make money. <laughs> They, they, start, they start a business or they get into entrepreneurship or they get into sales because they want to make money. You know what I'm saying, Simone? Yeah, good morning to you. The cash flow queen is in the house. Y'all feeling what I'm saying to you? What, what are some principles that come into your mind? Because everybody thinks that they in this game to make money. I'm going to keep it real with you. I don't think there could be a worse reason to get into business. I don't think there could be a worse reason to get into sales. <laughs> I ain't mad at wanting some money. Money's a good thing, you know, but I think getting into sales, getting into entrepreneurship, becoming a leader because you want to make money. I think that's the worst reason ever. I ain't going to lie. I ain't going to lie. What do y'all think? Okay. Somebody said consistency. Wow. A lot of people say consistency. I ain't mad at consistency. Somebody said making decisions. Somebody else said persistence. Somebody said enthusiasm. Okay. Self-discipline. All right. Looking to serve others well. What are some principles, y'all, that you feel like create wealth for any entrepreneur? Where do y'all think we're going with this? Coachability. Being able to pivot, you know, and, and, and adjust when you see the need for it. Um, having consistency with your actions. Somebody else said relationship building. That's another big one, right? Somebody said helping others. Uh, somebody said the principle of problem solving, making sure that you see it um, as, a, as an opportunity to grow, not something to complain about. Uh, being a giver. Okay, okay, I see where we're going. Goals in your family. Somebody said one of the principles got to be passion. You know, one of the principles has to be being a good listener. I love it. I love it. I love where y'all are going. Because here's the whole thing, y'all. Ain't nothing wrong with earning money. I didn't say, I didn't, I, I, see, this is the whole thing. You don't make money in entrepreneurship. You earn it. You hear me? The biggest reason that entrepreneurs fail is the philosophy, I'm in this to make money. I'm in sales because that's where the money is. I know what you're trying to say. And yet, we're millionaire minded. Of course, you're here because you want to make a million dollars. I hope that's your goal. A million dollars don't make you rich, but it's a what? It's a great start. So yeah, I know you want to make some money. I know you want to earn some money. And a lot of us want to earn it for different reasons. But we all need money to achieve our goals. We all need money to achieve our dreams. Somebody give it to me in the content. Somebody give it to me in the comments. Money answereth all things. Money answereth all things. We're aware of that, right? We all need it to achieve our goals. We all need it to achieve our dreams. But how do you get the money? There are three principles that are going to help you build your wealth. There are three. And if I give them to you, I just want to know you're going to use them. I'm going to give them to you, but I just want to know that you're going to really look at yourself and analyze where you are with these three, because it's going to sound simple to you. And yet, and yet, nobody gave these answers. Nobody gave these answers. You hear me? Ruby said, being in position to control your own wealth. Maddie, uh, uh, my man Mike was like, uh, uh, yeah, money answer all things, Mike. Facts, bro. Um, Malikia was like problem solving, giving hope to others. Do you know nobody answered with the three that I'm about to give you? All of these were decent answers. Yeah, JSM boxing, no money answereth all things. My man, Coach Bailey, knows money answereth all things. Yeah, Ruby, that's right, Taisha. Money answereth all things, Sade. That's what I'm talking about. Money answereth all things. Somebody give it to me in the comments if you believe that. Money answereth all things. Money answereth all things. If you got a problem and you can cut a check for it, you ain't got a problem it's an inconvenience. You hear what I'm saying to you? Here are the three principles that will allow any entrepreneur to create wealth. These are the principles that will allow any entrepreneur to create success in their, in their life. Y'all ready? Here go the three. 
Here go to three. Number one, you earn money by building a strong self-belief system. Here's number two. You earn money by being better than everybody else. And here's number three, y'all. You earn money by having answers that other people in your industry don't have. <laughs> those are the three ways you are. Those are the three principles. If you keep those principles near and dear, I want you to give yourself a ranking on each of these. How strong is your self-belief system? How strong is your self-belief system? Huh? Let me hear it, y'all. How strong? On a scale of one to five, how strong is your personal belief system? What, what do we mean by that? How do you build belief? Millionaires, when I say building a belief system, I'm saying having the confidence that you can do whatever you set your mind to. Um, there's this documentary right now on Arnold Schwarzenegger. Uh, me and my son just now watched that joint last night. We, we went through all three episodes. It was phenomenal. It was phenomenal. The first one focused on Arnold Schwarzenegger as an athlete. The second one focused on Arnold Schwarzenegger as a, a politician. I'm sorry, as an actor. And then the third one focused on him as a politician. And in each one, the thread that was running through the whole thing is that he was not just about building his body. He was about building his mind. You know, you ask him about um, his his childhood and, and where he grew up. And he says it was horrible. But then he says, but that was a good thing, because if it wasn't so bad, I wouldn't have wanted to do what it took to get up out of there. Woo! I'm talking about belief. Millionaires, do you have the belief that you can do whatever you set your mind to? You know, Arnold Schwarzenegger was this skinny kid from Austria, super thick accent. And um, he fell in love with this guy uh, when, when he was watching the movies. He went to the movies one day and um, here's this guy playing Hercules. I think his name was Greg Pace, something like that. And Arnold Schwarzenegger was blown away because he was like, yo, look at this dude's body. How could you sculpt your body into something like that? And then you mean to tell me on top of that, he's, he's uh, in this movie getting to kiss the pretty girl and right at that time, he was starting to look at, you know, girls and he was starting to look at his body, you know, so it happened at the perfect time for him. That was it. He was like, if this guy can do it, I can do it. What about you? Who are you looking at and emulating? Who is your role model? Can I see it in the comments? Who is it that you're looking at and you're like, if they can do it, I can do it. Who, who, who is your, who's, who's giving you your belief? Millionaires, this is the thing. You got to know why you want to earn a fortune. You got to know why you want to earn a fortune. You hear me? Um, and then from there, you got to have the confidence to take the action. But my question for you is how are you building that belief right now? How are you building that belief right now? It's a very interesting question. It's a very interesting question. Uh, what about that second principle? Being better than the rest. Being better than the rest. Um, you know, back to this Arnold Schwarzenegger documentary, it was wild. He was talking about how he joined his weightlifting club and everybody else would be lifting based on, you know, what, you know, biceps, triceps, you know, squats, et cetera, so forth. And they would mark down how many uh, reps they did, you know, in the set. He was writing down how many sets he would do. He would write down how many sets he would do. So he would do a set of 20, and then he'd put one mark on the thing. Then he'd do another set of 20. He'd put one mark. So everybody else might be tw doing 20 reps. He's doing 20 sets. Of the he wanted to be the best. You know, um, I had my son reading this book called The Abundance Book by John Randolph Price. I think it's called The Little Book of Abundance or something to that effect, right? And... Um, you know, he was talking about how, you know, it was really interesting to him that the book was like, give it all away to God, give it all away to God. Because he's like, um, how, how could that be the key to abundance? This is how my son's mind works. When Jeff Bezos is a walk in human rights violation and he's the richest man in the world. I said, wow, we're fair point, right? But check it out. 
In every industry, you always gonna have a Michael Jordan. In every industry, you always gonna have a Kobe Bryant. You're gonna have somebody that takes it too far. Y'all know the stories of Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant where some basketball player would arrive and think they doing something because they got there at 5 a.m. to the gym. And when they get there, not only is Kobe Bryant already there, but he's already drenched in sweat. Somebody know what I'm talking about? He wanted to be better than the rest. He wanted to do what it took to excel past everybody else. And if you know Kobe Bryant's story, you know he wouldn't just work out in the morning. He'd be back in there a couple hours later. And then he'd be back in there right after school. Then he'd go home and eat a little bit and then go right back in there. So if he's working four times a day and his competition is only working once a day and then the best of his competition is only working twice a day, at the end of a five-day week, they don't work 10 times and he don't work 20 times. At the end of a month, they don't work 40 times and he don't work 80 times. You get what I'm saying? What are you doing to be better than the rest? Where are your repetitions? A lot of us don't understand, right? But I talked about this a little bit earlier this week, but if I was to put up a little chart and on this side of the chart, you suck. And at this side of the chart, you're phenomenal. At this side of the chart, you're a disaster. At this side of the chart, you're a master. You know what's the difference between the two sides of this chart? The amount of repetitions. You say you suck talking to strangers. Imagine if instead of talking to one stranger today, you talk to 10. You say you suck at knowing stuff about your industry. Imagine if instead of learning one thing about your industry today, you learn 10. And imagine you did that consistently. Imagine you were the Kobe Bryant. Imagine you were the Michael Jordan. Imagine if you were the Arnold Schwarzenegger of what it is you do. Do you understand? This is simple things that cause you to be extraordinary. All you do is put a little extra with the ordinary and you're extraordinary. I'm talking about getting up one hour earlier. I'm talking about always making that last call of the day. I'm talking about striving with intention and intensity to be the best at everything. You know, Arnold Schwarzenegger was talking about his father would have them competing at everything. I'm talking about not just who finished their food first, but who picked the best flowers for Mother's Day. And then his brother would come in and he would say, oh, those are beautiful. Look at the flowers. And then he turned to Arnold and say, you'll try again next year. You'll try again next year. And it put a, such a fire in Arnold Schwarzenegger's belly, right? What's putting the fire in your belly? What's making it so that you ain't willing to settle for second place? Ain't no prize for second place. I mean, actually, there is a prize for second place. You know, it's called poverty. What are you doing to be the best at whatever it is you do? While they're making two phone calls a day, what if you made 20? I mean, I know this is just us talking this morning, right? But am I in the wrong place to be real? Was well, okay if I share with you that if you were doing 20 calls a day instead of two calls a day, in six months, you'd be the best there is. It's just you're not doing it religiously. You want to get to heaven, but you won't pick something out that requires faith and then do it religiously. I don't understand how you expect to get to heaven if you never want to die. This version of you has to go bye-bye if you're ever going to reach the promised land. Yeah, getting up one hour, staying up one hour later, always making the last call of the day, always striving to be the best at everything, not being willing to settle. You say to yourself, dust settles. I don't. Somebody give me that in the comments. Somebody say, dust settles. I don't. Dust settles. I don't. Cindy said her daughter that's been battling stage four cancer since 2018. And the fact that she's fighting makes her want to fight. I love that. I love that. What about you? Who are you looking at to build your belief system and to decide that you're going to be better than everybody else? What's making you push through that? Somebody say dust settles. I don't. Flona was like, they said a player talked trash to Jordan after he retired. He came in at age 50 and embarrassed a bunch of 20-year-olds. Yeah, for real. And when we're talking about stuff that builds belief, one of my favorite stories about Jordan is that when he made the Basketball Hall of Fame, he brought his coach 
from high school that had cut him from the team all the way to the Hall of Fame thing. And he's talking to him from the stage, admonishing him, still kind of, you know, berating him and browbeating him, talking about you made a mistake, dude. Like he was still visibly upset. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Millionaires, that put the fire in his belly. What's putting the fire in yours, y'all? And then that third principle is learning new answers, learning new answers. Millionaires, you know you're supposed to be a consultant, not a salesperson. You know that by now. You know that you're here every morning to expose yourself to success information that you don't have right now. Somebody say, dust settles, I don't. Dust settles, I don't. Let's go, Taisha. Dust settles, I don't. Let's go, Kenya. Let's go, Shakela. Dust settles, I don't. Come on, Dennis. Dust settles, I don't. Let's go, coach. Dust settles, I don't. Let's get it. Let's get it, Arsenio. Dust settles, baby. But we're here to win. Ain't that a fact? So what we're going to do is expose ourselves to information, Charles. That's what we're going to do, Sade. We're going to expose ourselves to new information, Dr. Hernandez. Let's go. Let's go. Millionaires, what do I mean by that? Right? I mean, what's some information that you don't have right now, but you need if you're going to be the best. We talk about seminars. We talk about books. We talk about tapes. We talk about a plan for lifelong learning. There's only one way you're ever going to get answers, millionaires, and that's by learning the answers. Sometimes I teach my mentees to deal with that prospect like you know you're going to run into 10 more of them. You know you're going to run into 20 more of them. What do I mean by that? I mean, if I know that I'm talking to a truck driver, and truck drivers need business credit. And I know, therefore, I'm probably going to talk to a lot more truck drivers. Or let's just say I'm selling, you know, um, uh, whatever, man. I'm talking to realtors or something because I help people with personal credit. And, and I'm talking to realtors. Check it out. I'm going to ask the realtor questions that allow me to become an expert at something. My favorite thing to become an expert at is marketing. So I'll ask them questions that are based around me wanting to learn new information, not just for them. I'm seeing past them at this point. At this point, I'm asking questions that allow me to be strong when I'm talking to the next realtor, when I'm talking to the next truck driver, when I'm talking to the next car salesman. So since I want to know stuff about marketing, maybe I ask them, what's your number one technique for getting new clients? Now I get to write that in my techniques to get new clients section. You got me? I'm, I'm taking the notes. And now when I'm talking to another realtor, I'm able to say, yo, and here's a dope way you can get new clients. I don't know if you've ever thought of doing this, but, but before I even, you know what I mean? Why? What's, what's your best way? <laughs> now I got a second technique in my getting new clients section of my notes. You got what I'm saying? I'm learning new answers. Seminars, books, YouTube videos, podcasts. What are you doing to plan out learning for the rest of your life? Making that a routine, making that a habit. You only gonna get answers one way and that's by learning them. I know it sounds easy, but it ain't. What it is is simple. You're gonna have to go through failure. You're gonna have to go through discomfort. You're gonna have to go through ridicule, embarrassment, a real toughening of the skin. Um, they asked Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, at, at one point he, they, they were like, um, because his brother died and then, you know, not, not too long after that, his father died and they asked him how he felt about it. And he was like, I don't, he was like, I erased all of my feelings. He was like, there's something interesting about having a goal. He was like, I'm not no expert on psychology or nothing, but there's something interesting about having a goal. He said, uh, he said, when you have a goal, you don't have time to sit around like, oh, I feel so sorry for myself. Oh, my story is so sad. Oh, am I a victim now? He was like, you don't have time to think about that when you're waking up focused on your goal, when you know that you're going to eat, sleep, drink, and breathe your goal. And he said, I had a goal. Now, he said, now later on, you know, he allowed himself to feel some of that stuff, like his mom was the only one left that allowed him to spend more time with his mom. But the whole idea here is that he was adamant about building not just his body, but his mind. What are you doing to build your mind? 
What are you doing to expose yourself to new information every day? The key is learning something new about what it is you want to be the best at in the world every single day. How are you getting answers? Let me see it in the comments, y'all. What are some of your best ways for getting new information every day? What are some of your best ways for getting new answers for your industry? Now, I just told you, I like to ask this prospect questions that'll give me information so I'm more of an expert when I talk to the next person like them, right? How are you getting those answers? What are you doing? My man Flono says, watching podcasts and interviews from people that have done six figures so that way he can see it clearer. I like that. Six-figure monthly earners. Okay, okay. Dennis said reading books. What's the last book you read, Dennis? that they gave you some information you're using to build your business specifically. Um, you know, and I know the Bible, but one other book besides the Bible or, or the Quran or the, the Old Testament or the, the Bhagavad Gita or the Talmud or, or whatever it is you read that's a holy book. Uh, what else? What else? Somebody else? Somebody else? Somebody else? Alicia is like seeking knowledge from YouTube. Okay, Miss Allen. I ain't mad at that. YouTube University uh, definitely has some information on there. It's the number two search engine on the planet. I love that. I love that. Somebody else, like, how do you get new information? How are you getting these answers? How are you putting yourself in position to get the knowledge you need so that you can earn the money that achieves your dreams? <laughs> Millionaires, the biggest reason that people don't succeed is they don't expose themselves to existing information. Therefore, they don't believe in themselves, right? Now they lack the confidence to succeed. Y'all have heard me say it before. I'm going to tell you, say it again. Somebody write this in the comments. <clears throat> the will to win is really the will to prepare. Sade is like trainings on how to be more successful, working on PQ. I wonder what she meant by PQ. Maybe she meant EQ. I don't know. Reading books and strategic planning sessions. I love that. Taisha is like reading YouTube and then meditation. She going inside. Uh, Dennis, one of his favorite books is Think and Grow Rich, A Black Choice. That was written by the brother Dennis Kembro right here in Atlanta. Cindy Russell said, chat GPT. Taisha said, the Kaizen Academy, let's go. For those that don't know, you can join our academy whenever you're ready to take it up a couple notches. My man Daryl's like watching webinars. Daryl's also a member of the Kaizen Academy. Jasmine's like watching your show. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Ken is like mentors that are knowledgeable. That means they've been there, done that, and got the t-shirt. Somebody write this in the comments. We don't take advice from you unless we're willing to trade places with you in that area, right? I'm not saying this person is perfect. I'm not saying she's my expert on knowing how to change oil in a car. But if she's an expert on sales and she's been there, done that and gotten a T-shirt, she's won the titles. She's the one that I'm, check it out. I'm I, What she got in me is a student. I promise you. Uh, Kenya's like all the above plus asking questions or learning from others that have made it before me. Yeah. And one thing I love about what Kenya does is she's learning to get and Jamal does this, too. A few of you are really good at this. Now they're getting into the place where they recognize after I do this experience, let me hurry up and come ask for feedback. Let me hurry up and come ask for feedback. That begins to add information on. That begins to give us the nuances that lead to mastery. Like, oh, when I talked to him, I said, uh, what did you think? But you're saying I should say, what did they like the best? Right. That's a small nuance because those sound like the same exact question to an amateur. But if I ask you, what did you think? You're going to start trying to make yourself sound smart by pointing out everything you noticed that was wrong. But if I ask you, what did you like best? You're going to start sounding smart by pointing out everything that was right. But most people would confuse those. That's because it's the nuances. Mastery is always found in the nuances. Taisha's like millionaire minded TV. Yeah, the will to win is really the will to prepare. PQ and EQ go hand in hand. What's PQ, Sade? Uh, the will to win is really the will to prepare, Javon. Let's go. The will to win is really the will to prepare. That's right, Sade. We don't take advice from you unless we're willing to trade places. That's a fact, LaShondra. You better preach. Yeah, Kimberly's like educational seminars, workshops, mentors, training. Yeah, that's right, Wyona. Let them know, Kay. We, don't, we ain't taking advice from just anybody. Let's go, Kay. 
Where you been at? You better shout, Damon. I Mike Legacy said he's in them advanced sales mastery notes right there. Let's go. Drop some, drop some fire emojis for my man Mike Legacy looking at his notes. You know how rare that is, King? 10 24 7. You look at your notes for 10 minutes every 24 hours for seven days straight, and your retention goes up 86%. Somebody type that in 10 24 7. Make sure you remember that. 10 24 7. Let's go. We don't take advice from you. Let's be willing to trade places with you. That's right. Uh, what did you like best is a good one because they get confused when I say, what's your biggest takeaways? That's what I'm saying, coach. It's the nuances, baby. It's the nuances. They dropping in fire emojis for my man, Mike Legacy, looking at his notes. Y'all know most people don't look at their notes. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Y'all know it. Seeking to grow perspective and experience with each exchange. Journaling. I like that. I like that. So check it out, y'all. Um, um, write your biggest takeaways. What is the biggest thing you learned from this training in the comments? It's not so important that you want to succeed, but it's critical that you know why you want to succeed. You hear me? Yeah, knowing you want to succeed is good, but knowing why you want to succeed, that's the thing. Here's a bonus for you. What's prevented you from succeeding so far? You know, I ask them before you start this 90 day blitz, what normally throws you off? What normally makes you quit? What stopped you so far from doing this? Most of us didn't just say no new dream when we started thinking about what is our dream. Most of us didn't name something brand new. Most of us named something that we've been wanting for a while. So what's prevented you from getting there so far? What do you plan to do different? What belief system do you need to put in place? What game plan do you need that makes you feel prepared? Part of that preparation, we said the will to win is really the will to prepare. Part of that preparation is knowing why you normally quit. And what you're going to do when them same familiar thoughts pop up in your mind again? Am I making sense? Somebody type that in the comments if you feel me. Why do I normally quit? Write that out. Why do I normally quit? Why do I normally quit? And if you heard that last sentence and started blaming everybody, you're doomed. If you started blaming everybody but yourself, you gone, baby. You might as well give up now. You, it's over. You got to take responsibility for that failure, even if it wasn't your fault. Because taking responsibility, taking into your own hands the ability to respond is the only thing that guarantees success. It's so easy to lose self-belief, millionaires. If the, if the self-belief you got in place is weak because you ain't got no knowledge, you ain't got no determination because what the game keeps showing you is you're going to keep losing. You're not even learning. You're just losing. It's over. If you've never told yourself, a.k.a. sold yourself on the fact that you got a why, you know why you want to be in business in the first place? Not just making money, but earning money. And not just earning money for the sake of earning money, but the real reason you want to earn money, you don't know what you'll do once you get it. It's over for you. You know, you might, you might want money for a home of your own. You might want money for a specific college you want your child to be able to attend. You might want money because it'll liberate you from a spouse. You might want money to gain the approval of a sibling or a parent. Like Arnold Schwarzenegger was like, when his mama died, he was like, dang, so why now why am I going this hard? Like, what, what's, what's the purpose of this? You know what I mean? Whatever it is for you, you got to uncover it, baby. You got to write it down. You got to post it up. You got to reveal it, right? If it's possible, you got to put that thing everywhere you look. Carry it with you. Read it a few times a day. Me and my son are about to start a 40-day prosperity plan from this abundance book from John Randolph Price. And one of the things in that 40-day prosperity plan is to write your goal over and over and over again. Every single day, write your paragraph over, right? I dare you. But that's still only half the success formula. You also got to seek to be the best there is at what you do. I promise you, if you're going to be the best, if your focus is on being the best, the other goals are just going to show up. The other dreams are just going to manifest. Combine your why, millionaires, with the desire and the dedication to be the best. And boom, you a legend. Some of y'all, man, leave me alone about all the philosophy stuff, Hazik. You know, I, I'm sick of hearing you always talk about mindset. Tell me how to make some money. I am telling you how to make money. This is the most powerful lesson I can deliver to you possibly. These are the three principles, y'all. Y'all got them? Y'all got them? Somebody give it to me. What were the three principles? Strong self-belief. Being better than everybody else. And having answers that other people don't have. Repeat after me. It's affirmation time. Let's get it. 
I am so happy and grateful.